for listening to the Marketing of All podcast with Jason Peterson, Holly Peterson, and Deidre Stevens. During this time, we bring you some of the current marketing stories and, as always, offer up a bit of our unsolicited advice for small and medium-sized businesses based on our industry expertise and knowledge. Just a quick format rundown. So for those unfamiliar with our podcast format, we'll give you a quick refresh. Each segment is timed to make the best use of your time topic and to prevent some of us from scurrying down that rabbit hole of tangent land. Thanks for joining us. We continue our interview with Jack Mitchell on Marketing Evolved. All right. Well, the gentleman you've been hearing on the mic, in addition to me, Holly and Deidre, is the uh, legendary Jack Mitchell of <laughs> of, of, of uh, Lincoln and uh, LNK to Dan KLN. So Jack and I have known each other here for almost the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're both Lincolnites. Um, we got lucky, or I got lucky, we ended up being on a plane ride to the Big 12 Championship in which you and John Bishop were the uh, MCs, and you and I sat down on the plane and started geeking out on tech. And, I remember that. Uh, yep. From yep. there, you... Said, hey, come on by, and you and I have had jam sessions since then, and I, we've, I mean, again, I tell people, um, Jack, I think the thing I really appreciate about you is, I mean, you're just a really, you know, what you see is what you get. The guy that, you know, I talk to every day, I, you know, I consider, you know, you're that kind of person where that's the guy that you talk with offline, and I think sometimes, you know, when we deal with our clients, authenticity is huge, and we always value that a great deal. So I've just, I have a ton of respect for you, man. I really appreciate you coming on today. Um, it has been. It's been a blast. For those that have not listened, again, Jack is on every morning from what time? Six to nine. Six to nine. Mm-hmm. Monday 14, through Friday. 1400 KLN. Yep. Um, again, you've been doing this for how long? It's been 2006, so I'm just coming up on my 13th anniversary here. So needless to say, you, you've been a good voice and uh, had good perspective on Lincoln as it's grown and changed. And I mean, again, you and I are similar age and yeah. Lincoln's changed a lot in the last 13 years. No, it's been, it's been great getting to know you and, and having some fun conversations on the radio. And, and I've said incredibly wrong things like nobody's ever going to buy the Apple watch to <laughs> uh, other <laughs> Holly holds hers up. Uh, hey, as, I'm, uh, I'm we've made, we've said, we've said things that were very much came true and we've had our, yep. our mistakes in talking about the future of tech and social media, but it's, it's always, it's something I love talking about. So I appreciate that you do Absolutely. it because you and I can geek out together and I really appreciate you guys having, having me here today and, and uh, looking forward to continuing to chat. Welcome. So, so I'll give you a little just kind of formal background on Jack, and then we'll just kind of get into a get-to-know session. So um, Jack is our first guest for Marketing Vault, so wow. thank you very much, sir. I'm honored. I tell you what, it's a, <laughs> it's a, we're, we're, we're in the infant stages, but uh, we're excited to have you. So Jack is born and raised, and again, like myself, uh, here in Lincoln. Now, the thing I love about you is you're a former lawyer. Yeah. Which I think is just awesome. And I think that contributes to your uh, objectivity as a radio host. That's Maybe. What I think so. Maybe. So you decided to take the path into radio. And you, you've told me a little bit of that story. We'll get into that. Uh, again, you're the co-host to the Lincoln Morning Show, LNK Today on KLIN. Um, Jack has also started a new venture with his own podcast called the Jack Mitchell Podcast. Yep, creative which, name. Which, <laughs> hey, I need some marketing help. Obviously. Google will find you easy to find. I know, I know. I thought of that. I was like, you are the brand, um, and I've listened to it, guys. It's amazing. Um, really good stuff. Uh, he invites again his friends to join him in his basement, where they discuss personalities, life experiences, sports, careers, local culture, and relationships. Uh, Jack is a father of two kids and an avid Husker fan. Again, if you follow him on Twitter, uh, definitely if we're having a bad game, uh, Jack, Jack can get a little cranky <laughs> on Twitter. So that's always a that's always a good time. And again, this has good been a good place. I think a lot of people don't know how to use Twitter, especially with our clients. You're a good example of someone that I think uh, can teach people on how to use Twitter. And again, so thank you so much, Jack, yeah. for joining us today. Thank you. I'm, I'm really excited about it. So we want to start off with one question to okay. ask you. We're going to ask this to all of our guests. But okay. what is your favorite social media platform and why? So my favorite social media, and, and, and Jason kind of let it out of the box there, is is definitely Twitter. Um, it's definitely Twitter for me in, in multiple ways, in both in consumption and in terms of using it for my own uh, benefit or branding or, or marketing for me it by far now on the consumption side of it it's not it's not even close um, it's not even close because um, just in terms of the the ability to follow you know as the day goes on the live events of the day in a temporal fashion 
and selecting the just the little bites of the people that I want to hear from. It just I've tried spending my day scrolling Instagram. I or, and I don't like it used to be Facebook. I don't like Facebook anymore. The pure temporal timeline of Twitter, the pure kind of soundtrack of what's going on in the world that I'm interested in is what I see Twitter as. And so for me, whether I was using it uh, to for myself yeah. or or not, I would be following. And, you know, uh, I would absolutely be be following whether it's d- the news of the day, whether it's in the middle of a game, mm-hmm. whether it's watching a TV show. Um, whatever it, it's this shared community experience and, and I call it kind of the soundtrack of, of what's happening that you care about. And so by far for, for consuming it's that. And then for me now, I don't know. I think I'm uh, because I consume it that way. I probably spend by far the most time thinking about and using it, um, as, as a tool for myself. Um, and I probably haven't tried as hard in some ways with the other ones because I just like the interaction more. I like everything that goes along with it um, more. But for for whatever reason, I, I think for me specifically, I think it definitely can vary for person to person, business to business, whatever that it is. I don't necessarily think it's the right thing um, for, for every business. But my brand is kind of a personality, mm-hmm. um, at least on Twitter. And, and that is or at least... Um, uh, 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 that's what I'm trying to kind of convey to people and get my get my Q rating up with them and endear myself in a lot of different ways and be an interesting personality. And I think it's much easier to do that with the volume on Twitter that I can do with the uh, with the reacting to things. And that's been s- more successful for me than really than any other social media platform by far. So uh, definitely Twitter by a long shot. Woo. That Are you happy sense. about that? Oh, I absolutely love Twitter. Yeah. We discussed that on a podcast, and I was like, I am hashtag wannabe influencer, and I, lo- I love Twitter. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Yeah. I think the thing, Jack, where, where it really works for you, and I think this is, like you said, every every client, some of them apply to some of them, some of them work better with others, but definitely for you because you've, I think, been a resource of information, and you are, let's be honest, you are a brand of yourself. I mean, you've developed that over time. That's, I think you've you have developed and created a good use of Twitter. I, I think you are, um, of a lot of people we deal with, a great example of how Twitter can be, you know, leveraged in the right way. Because I think for your podcast, this has been a great way for you to launch it because you've got a good following and so forth. And again, you've got, you know, the ear of the community where people are like to follow you. And again, I know on the sports side, that's that's a huge part. Yeah. That's always a, a total fun time. It, it, it's almost become weird because I've got the, the, the Twitter account that, you're probably talking about is technically my personal account. I have a um, that I had that prior. Well, I had that unconnected with work. And while you'll see some of my things um, for work on there that I'll, I'll throw on there, I have a separate one that's affiliated with KLIN that they technically own um, a much more stream of consciousness on, on my <laughs> own personal one. And, um, and, and, you know, it's interesting because that Twitter account has almost become that's almost become one version of me <laughs> and my radio personality has become a completely different version of me. And there are two very different audiences associated sure, sure, with those. Sure. Um, the, the Twitter account is younger and more sports centric and probably lives in Lincoln, but maybe Omaha, maybe anywhere around the country. Um, there's I mean, I've, and this is me kind of speculating on the demographic, but it's very different. The radio audience is older, more interested in news and politics, probably yep. uh, definitely lives in Lincoln. And, and they're two there. So they're two very different. So the podcast is actually, you know, it was always a little frustrating because I didn't necessarily plan it that way to build up that whatever that Twitter is. Um, but it's tr- it kind of turned into its own thing. And since the radio audience and the Twitter audience was kind of a separate thing, I kind of want to start this podcast so I could do a little bit of what I do on the radio, but more catered toward that audience. And so that's Absolutely. kind of what the last few months of, of that has been. But it's just it's kind of weird. I balance these two because I think there are people on Twitter who don't realize what what I do for a living. Yeah, I, mean, I think there are people who, people who follow me on Twitter who or don't or who have never listened. Well, and I never listened at all because you're right. I mean, you and I, and I think we talk about this with you and I, and especially Holly, where we're kind of this ambassador generation between. Although we're getting older, we, we interact with the younger, and we obviously interact with the older. So for you, I mean, that is yeah, that's kind of what that is. That that to me is an interesting dynamic where you know, and and again, I think this is there. There is in order to do that, it's kind of like you have to earn it. 
but you can really screw it up if you don't do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think kudos to you. I think you've done a really good job of being true to who yourself is. But again, you're not ostracizing anybody necessarily in terms of, you know, how people have, you know, in, uh, interact with you and so forth. So yeah. I, think, I think that's that's an interesting perspective because most of our clients have like no shot of Twitter helping them at all. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I'm which not... is interesting. But that's that's cool. I mean, we we don't have a lot of clients like that. So I think that's always a good perspective for clients like that are trying to be an influencer. Like we have a gentleman that's uh, a tribute artist for Elvis. So for him and some of those, there might be again. He's probably more sense. Instagram. Yeah, he's yeah. Got Insta more I think influence. Instagram with him, but yeah, you if you really want to kind of, yeah, I, yet bear the the personality. I think that's probably the the best mm -hmm. way, and and um and and that's how I've used it as well. But it's it's interesting. I wish I was better at Instagram. I don't. I mean, I can't. Uh, that's all my son looks at. I mean, I, you know, that's the interesting thing. One hundred percent. I mean, I Instagram, 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 and I look at him like. Man, I can't do that for more than thirty seconds on my phone. You got to. I get. I lose interest. I know yeah. someone I can train you. I was gonna say <laughs> this is Deidre's uh, mo. She's good at that. Jason, yeah. what is your favorite social platform? Oh. Well, okay, so Jack and you and I have kind of talked about this. On the one hand, we work in this, so I don't feel like I get to enjoy social media because, like, for my Facebook. I got here, so here. many people. It's like <laughs> I, don't I don't enjoy. I don't, I don't enjoy don't, Facebook anymore. I, don't, I mean, I still enjoy Twitter. I don't enjoy. Facebook I mean, I have a lot all. of friends. I mean, I'd say family. They they like seeing some of our kids and stuff like that. If I was to pick, um, I feel like that the most traction oriented, engaging one is Instagram. I I do think that one is the least cluttered for me. Hmm. And like I know, for example, so my sister who's five years younger than I am. Um, that's all she uses Instagram entirely. So it, there truly is this kind of like 35 and under that really, really hits the Instagram crowd the most. But so for me, I would probably say Instagram, but I think, you know, as I've shared with you and I've shared with Holly, like we have to, we consume it, we use it. I mean, I think Deidre has been wonderful because she keeps us, she's pushing us along and making sure like Deidre knows Instagram stories, dude. We did not know how to do Instagram stories. It just wasn't part mm -hmm. of our mindset. Yeah. So, I mean, even for us, I mean, we're becoming old dogs, and we got to make sure. Easy. Well, me. Easy. Yeah, you're, 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 you're not. But I feel Ouch. like for me, <laughs> that was just I'm, not, I'm just lumping me and Jack <laughs> wow. in this man. But, Damn. but, but for me, having people, I, I would just say, like Deidre and stuff, it's given a, a fresh perspective on how it's evolving and how you must you know, stay on top of that. So that's my take. What about you, Holly? Pure pleasure would be Pinterest. Wow. wow. I'm not like that's a just... pinner person, but like I'm really into design and exteriors and interiors and all that good stuff. And just visually getting ideas and just that curation and sharing of content. It's just a very, uh, what's the word I should use for it? Um, well, it's visually stimulating. Yeah. Like, there's not ne negativity there. You don't yeah. have to worry about that at all. Hmm. You can curate your content exactly for what you want. Like, I started seeing all these ridiculous Skittles commercial, and they were actually just kind of gross commercials. And so I was like, see less of this. And it just got rid of them all together. <laughs> like, Facebook gives you a little bit of freedom with that, but to some degree, they don't. And so that's true for Facebook. That's true for Instagram, too. Facebook, in case anybody didn't know, owns Instagram. And so there's a lot of the sharing of algorithm and how the tech works. But Pinterest, it's not trying to be anything but itself, you know, and it's just appealing to I its agree. users. And I just really, I really enjoy that. Mm. So like if I want to decompress, I enjoy Instagram, but I get on Pinterest because I can look for things that I truly enjoy, like hobbies and things like that too. So, or something funny for that matter. Oh. So it's great curation of content and the way they approach that. So... That's what, mine. What about you, Deidre? Hmm. You alluded to Twitter, but I mean, if you I mean, had to yeah, pick... but if I had to pick one, I'd, I'd probably pick Instagram, obviously. But I mean, Instagram is hard. It's harder to use, I would say, than Facebook, just in the simple fact of like, it's harder to find the people you want to follow mm -hmm. and you can probably get oversaturated where, you know, Facebook, you still have to pick and choose your friends. Yeah. yeah. Where Instagram, it can be a little overwhelming. Um, I just this past weekend did my first influencer takeover for one of our clients, which was dope. I had so much fun. Um, it, I felt like was, I felt like one of those people that we've talked about on the podcast before. Like I'm giving someone an inside look to what this client provides 
and hopefully when they see it they're putting themselves in my shoes like it is it was it was crazy it was so, so much easier so speaking from like an instagram perspective <laughs> like personality you mean mm-hmm. yeah so like you're saying because you can convey your personality you feel like the most effective through oh, instagram yeah i do and i feel like um also really interactive i have a lot of friends that send me post and stuff through instagram now a lot more than they ever would even twitter like i have friends that are like oh i saw this post and thought of you whether mm-hmm. it's like an office meme or even like kevin and i will share messages like oh hey i saw this and that yeah hmm. cool all hmm. right so let's get to some other questions here for jack because i think again you're you have a good story i mean as you know i've gotten into more of the video stuff and really for us from a marketing perspective we look at telling stories it's not about sales and pushing stuff it's like get to know you stuff so again let's give us kind of the reader's digest like okay why radio a <laughs> little bit of the journey i know some of this but for mm-hmm. those that have not heard tell us a little bit about how your aspirations for radio the lawyer thing and how that transpired um i as as a kid growing up in in lincoln uh, i was kind of a, a a little bit of a talk radio nerd growing up i loved listening to uh, KFOR then had Scott Young and Kathy Blythe, and the, like they were really omnipresent. I mean, they owned this city in terms of radio when I was a kid. So my parents would listen to it, and I was I was always fascinated with it. And then Sports Day Mid America came along, which was the the basically the first ever sports radio that there was, and it was all about the Huskers. And uh, Jim Rose did that, and and John Baylor did that. Later, John Bishop did that. Uh, Gary Sharp did that, and that I kind of grew up. Always lis- listening, listening, listening to radio. Never really thinking of it as a career option. Um, but but uh, did got to college, started in communications and journalism. Didn't love the process. Found a political science prof that I really liked. Ended up majoring in political science. Got done with college. Didn't know what to do. He suggested law school. I said, okay, I'll go to law school. And uh, that w- was able to go back to Lincoln, uh, come back here and, and go to law school at the University of Nebraska. Honestly, not necessarily because I had always dreamed or, or planned on going into practicing law, but because it was the next logical step at the time, and I was putting off decisions, to be to be quite honest, although I did not not want to do that. It just seemed seemed like the right thing to do, and it, and it worked out, um, and so so I did that, and by the time I got to my third year, I was starting to look for a job, and uh, you know, I realized it's going to be a lot harder. If I want to go to Grand Island, or I want to go to Kearney, or I want to go to North Platte, or Norfolk, there's quite a few jobs. Um, but if I want to stay in Lincoln or Omaha, it's a lot more competitive uh, in terms of the jobs that were available. And I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. And there was a part of me that was just concerned that, uh, I, you know, I might not end up with anything. And I heard I had always talked kind of to people. I said, they would always say, well, what's your dream job? I was like, I'd love to be on the morning radio. That's what I'd love to do. You know, I hear the guys that I remember, you know, John Baylor did a, a morning show at that time. And he talked about sports and politics and Lincoln and I loved what Scott Young used to do as well. I'd love to do that. Just kind of pie in the sky. You know, what's your dream job? That kind of conversation. And so then one day I was out mowing my lawn and I heard, listening to the radio, I heard that there was a uh, career fair at the Embassy Suites. This is during my third year of law school, uh, but for, for the area broadcasters. And so I said, what the heck? I made a resume because I didn't have a job at that point. I put together a resume and a cover letter and I brought it to all the radio stations and introduced myself at that point. Um, so all of the radio groups that were in Lincoln then and whatever it would have been, 2002, 2003, shook all the hands, met them. And I met one guy whose name is Mark Halverson. Uh, and he was the GM of the, the stations that I work for now. Um, and he basically said, well, you know, I've always been fascinated with putting someone with a law degree, uh, on a news talk station. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I didn't think, <laughs> yes. I thought it was like a Hail Mary, oh, but yes. there's no chance it's going to work. And, I, and so I talked to him for about 15 minutes, shake his hand. Give him his resume, give him my resume. And then I realized that they don't really have an opening there for me. <laughs> There's nothing happening. And that went away. Uh, ended up getting a job a couple of months later uh, with a firm here in Lincoln doing civil litigation. Uh, did that for about three years. And it was tough. Uh, it was tough going right into law school, into, into that world for a lot of reasons. Um, but I was, you know, it was, I did a lot of family law. I think that kind of started away on me for a while. And, and for a variety of reasons, I was not completely unhappy, but it was it was a rough few years, and and that's a that's a tough life. Uh, and my phone rings one day in my office downtown Lincoln uh, as I'm getting ready for a hearing, and it's Mark Halverson. And this is 2006, three years prior. I had gone to this, and he said, "You know, our morning show host just quit, and 
you may remember you went to this career fair and gave me your resume three years ago. Do you wow. remember that? I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, I remember that. I was like, y- really? And he's like, he was like, I got about 100 applicants, but I'm going to cast a wide net. So if you want to come in and sit down with us, uh, we'd love to talk. And so I'm like, all right. So I did. And uh, I went through interview, went through another interview, went through a third interview. They put me behind the mic and had me basically do kind of a, a test. And and I'll tell you what, guys, now that I know what I know, I have no idea why they hired me. Like, I have, <laughs> there's, like, if somebody came to me now, you know, at whatever age I was then yeah. with no experience and said, hey, I'd like to do your job. I'd be like, ha, 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 yeah, no, that's not happening. <laughs> um but they, they for some reason, they, they, they decided to take a shot at it. They hired a gal out of Omaha who was doing Top 40 radio at the time, paired us together. She hung around for about a year and a half, and then she left. And then Bishop and I started doing sh- the show together after that. And I've had a couple other co-hosts since then. Uh, and so that's the, <laughs> that's wow. the, that's that's the roundabout way I went from being a civil litigator to a radio host. And I'm like, oh, and now that... Now, that's an interesting meeting if you want to have. Go to a law partner's office and tell them you're leaving to become a morning radio host. <laughs> or to call your parents and tell them. Also, not mu- those were days I was not looking forward to the, uh, the, the phone calls and the meetings that happened. But uh, no, but it's been cool. I, st- I, can't believe it, I still can't believe it happened that way. I mean, I, I'm exceedingly lucky, in all honesty, to, to have the opportunity. I think what's neat is that's what you did. And ultimately, I mean, as you can see, you know, whatever it's been 13, 14 years later, I mean, here you are and you're still doing that. So, uh, and again, I truly believe this, you know, whether you believe it or not is I think you being a lawyer and having that, I truly gives you the ability to have an objectivity as you discuss Mm -hmm. things. And that's, I think what I've always respected about you is, you know, you're a talking head, but you do your homework. You're, you're, you, you think things from different angles. And I, again, in addition to you're just a a fun guy to be around, but I've really appreciated it about you. So yeah. for what it's worth, maybe you didn't do as much practicing law, but I really think it did help. You. <laughs> it's fu- it's funny because my, I, I actually had my diplomas in my, uh, in my office at over at the radio station and they fell out of, they fell down once and my law degree was laying on the ground for weeks. I think it still may be there. And my former co-host Dave, he used to say, is that a metaphor for your life? <laughs> <laughs> But I think I think the thing that the thing that my boss is really like probably like the most, and I think one of the things that was attractive initially was that you kind of know what you can say and what you can't say, and you know which lines you can cross yep. and you can't cross, and that's kind of scary when you're hiring somebody to put on the radio. Yeah. So if you've got somebody who you feel pretty confident is going to be very mindful of those things, yes. I think that probably played into it a lot too. Yeah, All live right. radio is a lot different than a podcast. Yeah, no, no <laughs> kidding. All right, so. Um, I want to do, get to this before we get to the other one. So in relationship to your podcast, I mean, again, I know this is kind of a new venture for you. You're kind of sort of testing the water, see what you want to do. Um, I know myself and Deidre have especially listened to it and really, I think, been pretty impressed and I, it's very entertaining. So talk about this podcast, inspiration, why, kind of give us kind of the vibe. So for those that have not listened to it yet, that we can you know pass on to our listeners yeah. as far as what what they're looking for and what would they expect. So I'm doing it strictly as a as a hobbyist. It's independent of my work. I've got permission from my uh, employer to to do it. I'm not it, I'm not at this point trying to make any money off of it. It is completely just a hobby, and it's just an outlet for me um, because there's some limitations that I have on the radio, and I don't get to do some of the things that I want to do. Part of it is time, right? I've got I'm, I do a morning news talk show. I got, and you know this, Jason, I got like 13 minutes max. Sometimes it's fun to sit down and not have a time constraint on a conversation. I just don't get to do that much. Um, there are also topics um, that aren't um, probably as germane to the, to the morning show and just getting deep down, just having the depth of some conversations with people I know that I just can't do with my job uh, that I always kind of wanted to do and I always had this kind of part of me that was saying, oh man, I wish I had an outlet to do some of these things that I love doing as a part of radio. And so finally, I basically got permission to, to do the podcast. I always had it in my uh, in my mind, bought some equipment um, and got some equipment for Christmas and put together a little studio that's not as nice as the one that we're in now, but a, <laughs> one that's in my basement next it's, to my... It sounds good though. Next to my ping pong table. I know it's oh. echoey down there, but it usually sounds okay. And the, the premise of it has been just inviting people that I like and I find interesting and talking about things that mutually interest the two of us uh, or three of us. I've been I've been doing also it sometimes it's a single guest, sometimes it's two. And it's nice. And I said this at the outset. If you ever listen to my intro uh, podcast, I say, look, 
I'm not doing this for any audience. My whole life, I've been hyper attuned to audience. Sure, mm-hmm. sure, sure. Hyper thinking about everything I say, every segment I plan. I'm not doing that with this. I'm doing it to edify myself, Absolutely. basically. And if people like it, that's awesome. Sure, sure. That's sure. cool. I just, I just want to see, see where it goes. And so, yeah, from week to week, um, we do, I do completely different things. I may have guys uh, or uh, in who like sports, and we're talking about, or we talk. You know, I have a lot of friends in radio, so we talk about radio a lot yep. on the podcast yep, yep. Or in the history of radio. Uh, I've got friends in, um, and then you know, we got friends who are in sports media, and we end up talking about sports stuff. And then I have friends who are in politics, and we talk about politics stuff. And so the people who like sports listen to the politics one, and maybe they don't like that, or vice versa. Or just have my wife in. We yeah, talked about relationships. Awesome. <laughs> that was a good yeah, one. That was a good um, one. So that's that's kind of what it's been. It's all it goes against everything I've been trained over the years. You always have the listener in your head. Always have the audience in your head. I giving myself some freedom not to do that on the side, and, and that's what it's become. And uh, for the most part, it's gotten good reception. I realize it's. It's going to be it. Every episode isn't necessarily going to be in the wheelhouse of every person that listens, um, unless you're very similar to me. But but uh, I've had a heck of a lot of fun doing it. I like it. It's been a great. It's been just a great outlet, a great hobby, and hopefully we can keep it going for a while. Well, I think, like you said, one of the things that you get to do, and I know we're we're just infants in, in our podcast as well. But I like yours, and and I get that you have the ability to go deeper. I mean, I know that's the thing. I I was like, wow, I I, I couldn't conceive it being that long but like i said i one of them that we listened to that gentleman that was the professor at the university mm-hmm. and i told you Tyler I was, White, yep. exactly and i was driving uh back from bailey colorado where our cabin is and it was just riveting and i was like wow this is awesome so to me for those that um have heard you but want to get n- to know you more as a person i think that's where I, I like it is because you do get into it and again you're more yourself and i think that's what's interesting as we're getting in, and again, I give the credit to Deidre. She was the one that really pushed and, and got us to do this podcast is it gives you the opportunity, I think, to be more transparent, to, to be more open. And it's not so rigid and, you know, produced and stuff. Mm-hmm. You have the quality, but it allows you to have, you know, I think more real conversations. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and then, like I said before, I think I've got a little bit of a audience on yes, social media that absolutely. isn't on the radio. And, and I think maybe that's this is more attuned to the type of things that I do there. So, so yeah, it's been, it's been a whole lot of fun and I'm glad that you guys are doing it too. I, it's a, it's an exciting medium. I mean, it, Agreed. It, now there's a part of me as a radio person that looks on it with a little bit of skepticism, you know, when everyone, right. I mean, it's yes. the same, yeah. it, it, it's, it's the same thing probably. Well, I have a podcast right. too. Right. Everyone in their own profession, <laughs> exactly. everybody's probably got something like yeah. that in their own profession where you see other people trying to do it or yeah. thinking they can do it on an amateur basis. And so, there's a little bit of that going on with the world right yes. now from a, from a radio perspective, but to me, the answer to that is is get involved and and win win the area, win the market uh, in those places. And I think like radio needs to do that more. Frankly, I think I think radio should get uh, very involved because they've got all the tools to to be significant players in the podcast mm-hmm. world. Sometimes there's such a dedication to the idea of radio that that doesn't happen. See, and I had a really interesting conversation when you did your uh, fundraiser. Uh, where you sat on the Ferris wheel, yes. <laughs> which was awesome. Thank by you the guys way. for coming out, Absolutely. by the way, and, 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 and keeping me company. And when I was talking to Bishop, you know, again, who was on, I was at, for the time when I came on, you guys were together, which was a total hoot. I had fun with you guys. He talked a lot about the fact that it's the irony of that. I mean, for me, I listen, as you know, I listen to the zone all the time. And I listen to, I listen to the podcast almost exclusively. I mean, I'll listen no, on the live. radio on. Yeah. But, to me, this is where radio has the opportunity to evolve. So it's like, like you said, it's like with us and websites. There's all these kids that build websites, but you guys have the street cred of knowing the industry. And the irony is, is that in in a con- comparison to other traditional media, radio has that in demand opportunity that I think that has a financial revenue stream that can be effective and. That's where I'm. I'm always surprised that when I listen to these podcasts, Bish and I are talking. Like, there's nobody that sponsors them. It's like they're still selling all the regular airtime stuff. So right. to me, you're right. Is where you have that you know credibility of having 13 years of working in the industry. You're right. It's the cracking the code of now. How do I create a revenue model around possibly the content you're doing mm-hmm. to to make a business? And, and, and I'm fascinated. I'm I'm curious what you guys think too. What the what the future of this medium is, especially as it pertains uh, to businesses, to marketing. Is it worth it, right? I mean, if you've got 13 listens, is it worth it? But are there some 
is there some way that this kind of medium is going to be leveraged or can be leveraged more in the marketing world than it isn't yet? That that to me is really fascinating. I think that's a big question. What do you think, Holly? Well, I mean, I would say like any other, you know, stream of content that you're going to have your fluff, you're going to have your substance. And over time, you know, they'll start to sort of cancel each other out a little bit here and there. And the content that is good and is found to be valuable or at least enjoyable from a listener's perspective will win out. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. I also think that you don't necessarily have to create a revenue stream. Like our perspective is from our podcast is like, we don't have any sponsorships. We're not necessarily against that um, or doing any advertising. We're not there yet, but at the same time, we also want to be a resource for our clients. Right. So whether you're sitting there face to face or you feel like you can glean some knowledge from this or whether you need to have an actual one on one conversation with us. Fantastic. That's great. That's really at the end of the day why we're doing this. So I think it also just kind of depends on what your end go- goals are sure. and who your audience is. And I think you spoke well to the fact that honestly, at the end of the day, you need to enjoy it yourself. You know, I feel like there's so many things that we pursue. Um, when I say we, I mean everybody, where it's just kind of passionless. We do it because we have to, or it generates money, or whatever. It puts food on the table. We're told to do it. It doesn't matter. I feel like if you can glean some, you know, enjoyment from it and get that spark, or at least keep that spark going in some way, and it's somewhat about you as well, I think that's fantastic because I just, I feel like that's really missing in a lot of aspects. Yeah aspects of what everybody does now so i think it's well i just just add on to that real quickly you know i bet some of the smartest people in radio have said look it doesn't matter what you talk about as long as you're talking about something that you care about and if you're talking about things that you care about people are going to it's going to make good radio Mm -hmm. maybe the same holds true for just the content that you guys deal with to some degree as well if you feel like you have to do it it's not going to resonate if you're doing it because you're passionate about it and you're putting that kind of you know marketing content whatever content out that that is also going to feel the same way. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what you're getting to. I think it's a really good point. So one of the fascinating things I think, Jack, is, you know, between you and I trying to make sense of all the stuff that's going on with communications and tech and all that, is that I've started this thing called fact and fiction. It's just kind of this informal thing, but I've been throwing out some kind of tidbits just to kind of give. And I've done it kind of my B&I networking thing. It's kind of silly. But one of the things I read recently was the ridiculous traction, the percentage of content of people watching on video, which is like 75%. It's nuts. I mean, it's way more than I would say we watch. But I think where this relates to podcast and, and, and this medium is people respond to passion. They respond to storytelling, which is one of my questions here. They respond to authentic content. They don't want to be sold to anymore. Mm-hmm. So I think that for us, yeah. whatever medium it is, the, like I would say, the best videos ever that I do is the get to know you. I call it the origin story stuff. It's not the salesy stuff. It's just sit down. I always joke. It's like, have a beer, a glass of wine. Let's just chat. So I think that's the thing I love about the podcasting medium is it has that sort of same kind of vibe. And that, from what we're telling, is the most engaging content. So given that, like when you're doing this, like what's your thoughts on maybe the way radio is evolving where it's not just like you said the conventional all the ads this stuff or it's maybe more storytelling like what's your what's your take on that in terms of how content is changing and like how you maybe look at in your podcast telling stories versus like you said it has to be this like rigid like she said for an audience versus more for yourself yeah i i i think the the nature of the of the medium for podcasting allows a whole lot more of that because there are just a lot fewer there's a lot fewer constraints than there is when it comes to uh, a hard in and, and a hard out. And the, the other thing is, you know, the, the difference is, and it's not that one is better than the other by any means, but I, I, you know, I think in radio, you realize, I realize people are listening probably for about four minutes, three minutes, maybe, uh, when they're listening. I've got them just for a tiny bit. Somebody's tuning into your podcast, you're probably going to have them, assuming that they, they like it and they've listened before and they're not going to ditch it right away. You're going to have them for a, a long period of time. You're going to have them for 45 minutes or some of mine are, are, are an hour. Um, and it's just it's a little bit of a different strategy. And it allows you to to it allows you to reveal more slowly, I think, your personality and the people's personalities uh, that are that are alongside you. And it's not necessarily, you know, it's 
it's a lot of evergreen topics sometimes and uh, rather than things that are going around currently um, and and I think that that allows for that as well so yeah I think that gets to some of that that revealing of, of personalities that work so well for you in the videos I think that's probably a, a, why there, there's a powerful to this it's just discussion Disc- you know it's the same thing absolutely discussion evokes those things naturally that's how we get to know people right, right. we, we sit right. down and we we talk for a long time in the end that's really what this is um, if you do it well you'll have other people who listen absolutely um, one other question here and then again I know we'll kind of get into some of the uh, wrap-up stuff guest uh, I guess listener questions things like that so given you've done this and I, I mean this is kind of making you sort of like have some perspective on the, your career how do you think what's been your impact on the community like what what has been the most fulfilling part of your role in radio and just how you again your journey is a really cool and it's a great story but just what has it meant to you not just professionally but personally to have had the opportunity you've had to be uh doing your passion i guess for the last 13 years i remember when uh, i started this job at the very beginning and i had to make those difficult fold calls and tell people okay i'm going into radio from my my law job and i remember something my mom said to me um she said uh, the reason i always liked to listen to scott and kathy back in the day um was because they always talked like about the city of lincoln like they were excited to be here that they were thrilled that they were cheerleaders for the city and i don't necessarily mean the city government but for the city Absolutely. and, and Our community talked about this community in a positive and a positive way and, and and she and that stuck with me over the years and that's a hard and, and to be honest i don't think that's really probably the tone of talk radio in general right now wherever you are in the country um and so that's always kind of been my mentality and i don't think i've been perfect at it by any means i mean we do our things certainly when when i'm griping about something or complaining about something but i've always tried to have that in the back of my mind being honest about the fact that listen i'm part of this community i love this community you're going to see me in this community. You're going to see me at the grocery store. You're going to be see me. I'm going to do things for the people in the community and talk about the things that are good uh, about the community. And I think that has worked. I think that's worked, uh, which is a little bit odd. Maybe a little, I don't know if odd's the word, but it's a little bit against the stream, I think, in talk radio uh, in, in general. And so I'm, I'm glad I'm fulfilled that I've been able to uh, bring together and I think to be have a lot of, you listen the goal is to have a lot of people listen to to have a lot of people listen in a city like Lincoln you're going to have different types of people who are going to have to listen to your show that's been my goal uh, have having a wide variety and have people whoever they are feel comfortable uh, being able to listen and that's how you're going to kind of make good things happen and I hope we've done that yeah so I, I think that's it. and then just partnering with good causes uh, over the year and trying Absolutely. to trying to do some good in the community I think that's what I'm most proud of yeah, you've done some really neat. I mean, I've had the uh, privilege of being a part. I know you did your walk last year, which was amazing. Again, this latest thing you did with helping raise you know money for the flood victims. So, I mean, again, for our listeners, I mean, I, again, that's to me is authenticity is everything for us. And I, I think you've done a really good job with that. Thank track. you. Thank you. All right. So moving on. Do we have any uh, questions that from the peanut gallery we need to address? Oh, yeah. From the listener questions. Yes. Um, when does a company know they need a marketing help and I know we've kind of talked about this a lot I mean we've this has kind of been an ongoing theme um but I I wanted to bring this back up because now that the weather is starting to warm up like as the season change changes I think that some of our clients or even just businesses out there are starting to be like oh I need to change things up. So we need to get back on the map. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess that would be a good topic to discuss. Well, again, being the person that's kind of in the whatever I am, business development role here at Generate, I always say that pain motivates. You know, even in our the nine years we've been around, you know, five years ago, people, you know, more or less maybe did or did not need to worry as aggressively about Google or social media. As the audiences have evolved, as the millennials have gotten older and our consumers and own houses and stuff, um, we see so many clients that are struggling just getting referrals anymore. So I feel like that, you know, obviously it's it's good to get ahead of the curve so that you're planting seeds. I mean, we talk about, I mean, for you and I, Jack, you know, our generation, Holly's too, is like, if I recall, the least amount of executive positions 
of any generation being as old as we are. Mm-hmm. And it has to do with that the boomers have been hanging on so long. Mm-hmm. So in the next five to ten years, it's going to completely shift in terms of financial means, in terms of ownership. So we always talk about, like, for those business owners that are not going to retire, how do we position them for the long term? So I, I always say pain. Do you have pain? And in many cases, is I need sales. So, But I think, to Deidre's point, I always feel like that if you can be thinking about what you need to do, if you're an owner and you're going to be doing this for the next 15 years, you have to be mindful of how things are going to evolve, which is our podcast name. And uh, so again, pain, I would say, my dad would always say that pain motivates. What do you think, Holly? Yeah, we talk about that all the time. I mean, what is the pain point? Does it have to do with marketing? I mean, some people don't even realize it has to do with marketing or marketing their product or service until things dry up. Because I mean, a big common thing, and we even talked about this last time, is that, oh, I used to get so many referrals, and now I just, I have to work so hard for that, and like, yeah, well, you've got competition, and you know, whether you want to address it or not, you're aging, so you have the millennials taking over businesses or starting their own as well, so like, there's just, it's a different playing field now, and as a result of that, from a sales perspective and a marketing perspective, that's all different now too, so I mean, like anything else, you're going to have to evolve a little bit with the time. That doesn't mean changing your values as a company or changing the quality of your product. It's just about how you're communicating and reaching other people. Again, pain motivate. Usually it's in regard to sales and profitability. So, Jack, what do you think? Do you have any thoughts on that? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. You guys, I, I want the marketing <laughs> experts to, to tell me here. Um, but yeah, I, I, is there, when does a company know that they need marketing help? When when it's when when do they need that they know help? I mean, because you always need it. You're you you've always got to be doing it. I suppose you get to some point where you're realizing. I, mean, I don't mean to be too simplistic with it, but you're not getting what you want. I mean, essentially, when you realize that it's it's not working and it's time to to change something up. But to Holly's point, I think things the whole world is changing all the time, and so that can come up quickly. And you need to realize, okay, it may not just be. Oh, things are drying up for me. It may be because the world around you is changing and you need to change what you're doing in relation to that. And that may be the time you realize you need help. Okay, we've got to do something different because the the landscape is completely different than what it was even three years ago, maybe, uh, for for whatever we're talking about. Deidre, what's your perspective? Well, I I really love having Jack on here because he's talking about the city of Lincoln and we deal with a lot of small local businesses. But I'm telling you what, Lincoln is one of the hardest cities to market to. We have one of the most diverse groups of, I mean, we're just so diverse. Lincoln is truly diverse. And it's and loyal. And lo- yes, loyal and ever-changing. Mm. I mean, it's just, I mean, I've lived in Lincoln pretty much all of my life, but in the last even six years, and I've become a consumer, I've seen a change in ways that I never even thought. And so, like you all are saying, I think it's that realization of, yeah, the pain is motivating. I love Lincoln. I want to stay here, but I got to be even more competitive than I was five years ago. Yeah. Um, and so it's that, yeah, it's, it's a it's a turning point. But unfortunately, and I know I said this in the last podcast, marketing is always the first thing to go because people just assume that, oh, I don't need this anymore. Like I'm hitting my, you know, and then they freak out. And, and then I think kind of like what Jason touched on earlier, you know, being number one on Google, I think people assume that's probably the biggest misconception of our industry is that we just magically have these powers that we know Mark Zuckerberg and the guy of Google and we we send it right up to them and then uh, and that that's not unfortunately (laughs) it's not how it works it truly takes time and and a process and fundamentals and the whole shebang and so when you need help that's great but you need to realize what that's going to take yeah I I cannot post a I cannot make you go viral in a day. I am so sorry. I wish I had that power, but I'm not a singing dog. I don't have that power. Yeah. So if you won't need marketing help, you need to consciously think that through. And, and you also need to have a good product or service that you're mm-hmm. offering. Yeah. I'm sorry That's if it. you don't have it. We can't. It doesn't matter how or, much we help you. Or just be brand aware. Yeah. I swear we give clients our digital, our marketing questionnaire, and we are like Dr. Phil. They have not even thought of half of those questions in probably five to ten years, they're like, oh, I never even thought of yeah. this. Well, and that's it's like, not uncommon. You oh. get busy being busy. You get busy in the business. I mean, mm. we have to eat our own dog food, too, as Jason lives to see. I love that. Eat your own dog food. Ew. Right. 
It's a. I have all these sayings. Where we need to like, we've talked about this dog uh, food. Make a whole like list yeah. of Jasonisms. All right, okay. so we'll move on to the question of the day. This is for everyone to get to know us a little bit better. So, what is one movie that defined either your childhood, tween years, or teen years? Who can riddle that off? My okay, I, I can I can take it first. Uh, my teen years, for some reason. Like every weekend for about three years, my friends and I watched the movie Tommy Boy to the point where <laughs> like to the point where we had it opening credits to closing credits memorized. Like there was a time in my life where I could write that script down and only miss about probably five or seven words in the entire thing. So it's Tommy Boy. And, and it's hilarious because, Holly, when you were just I, I I forgot you were asking this question. And Holly, you were talking about well, you got to have a good product or service. All I, I thought of right away as I thought of the scene in the if you've seen Tommy Boy <laughs> in the brake pads uh-huh. when they're at wanting him to put a guarantee. Uh, have you guys seen it? So he says, <laughs> you want, he, goes, he says, I want a guarantee on the box. And, and he says, well, I'm selling you. I can put a guarantee on the box, but I'm selling you. It's a guaranteed piece of bleep. <laughs> that was exactly what I thought of, forgetting that this question was coming next. Uh, so, yeah, t- kids, it's a classic. I'm excited when my son, he's getting close enough to the uh, age where I can watch that, bring bring him into the yep. world of uh, Tommy Boy. But that was a heck of a run, uh, you know, than the old dogs in the room when we had Tommy Boy and Billy, uh, Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore. Absolutely. And I mean, it was... That was a great run it when we were in high school. I'm still sick to my stomach that Chris Farley is no longer oh, around. Gosh, I, I was mean, so, yeah. we showed the kids his van down by the river. Yeah, skip. Matt I saw my son that too. And so we quote it all the yeah. time. In fact, I was quoting it on the way to school. <laughs> Trevor was saying something. I'm like, yeah, if you want to live in a van <laughs> down by the river. <laughs> I, you, want a ma- you want a mountain jack <laughs> squat. <laughs> I, I, will, I will admit this is you something have a t-shirt. that not a lot of people know about me. But my family and I, we did take a trip to Sandusky, Ohio. Nice. And we, because there's a there is an amusement park up there. But we we went around and tried to find like tried a, to find Callahan Auto Parts t shirts. <laughs> yes. Yes. And we went to one. I remember we went to one restaurant. And we like were just, like legitimately asked, and they're like. They were mad. They were like, "You have They're no idea." Yeah, and but oh, they we, are? yeah, but we did <laughs> go to but we did go to sad. one like truck station, and they did have some Callahan Auto Parts T-shirts. But we literally put in our portable DVD player and watched Tommy Boy on our way to Sandusky, Good. Ohio, and then we were there, and we were, so we on were you. only quoting. Oh, I, I love that movie. That makes me yeah. No, we actually we try to find a uh, oh look prehistoric forest. Like we try really hard to find. <laughs> oh, look, we, forest. we need to watch that again here. Oh, there's so watch. many quotes. Cool, yeah, I I quote that in ways that people don't even recognize all the time. Now. Yeah. So, Sounds like my obscure still, movie quotes. Yeah, ho- Holly's known for like oh is quotes. she? You have like uh, I I have no idea what that yeah. is, honey. So that's uh, mine. Definitely time. But now I need to watch it again. Now that uh, we're talking about all it. All right, Holly, do you have one? Oh geez, put me on the oh, spot. No, Jason. I'm not ready. Okay. 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 Well, m- mine. Most of you guys know this. So, the movie that changed everything for me was Back to the Future. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm I telling you, you nope. I actually have a DeLorean T-shirt. Um, I, I I like you, Jack. I've probably seen that hundreds and hundreds you quote of times. It all the I time. almost. I remember as a kid when I couldn't sleep, I would like recite all the dialogue in my head <laughs> yeah. until I fell asleep. Never so, seen yeah, it. A- so, oh. 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 God. I've, well, I've, I've never seen it and if you had to tell me like oh DJ when you think of Back to the Future what do you think I think of the hoverboard and the Nike shoes which is the sequel but which yeah is the oh. sequel. <laughs> but to me not even the original <laughs> Doc you know so walk in the store and buy oh no it's that just, was that movie you're just, right that movie was a cultural phenomenon absolutely. when it came out there's no doubt and then and then with the Huey Lewis song going going with it as well the Power of Love, one of the greatest <gasps> pop songs ever written. I love that song. <laughs> that combination had so much synergy oh. that, it, and then Huey even made a cameo in the movie. Yes, I was, he did. yeah, I was a kid. I'm, I'm with you on that one too. I'm that sorry, would it's be too darn loud, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I mean, to me, and I've thought about why. I mean, as you know, obviously, I'm a geek at heart, but it was that juxtaposition of I like that idea of going back, and and again, the way they did it. I mean, Michael J. Fox is just awesome, but it, it j- just yeah, it's just and and again, I I think the other thing was is when they had the whatever that would have been fortieth, thirtieth, whatever anniversary, they went back and they saw okay in two thousand fifteen, which would have been in the movie what it would have been like, and they got like twenty or twenty five things right. So that was the other thing I always loved is yeah Spielberg and um, Zemeckis I think was mm-hmm. the guy they understood how to mix 
like pop culture from the old with the new. And I think that's where always science fiction got it wrong. Star Wars, whatever. It's like you got to bring in the old with the new. And that's how the future looks. So yeah. back to the future for me. Deidre. <clears throat> Um, I thought about this long and hard. There's probably like two movies I could say. One's really embarrassing, so I won't. But the one that always no, is... No, we want to hear the embarrassing. <laughs> well, okay, so my honorable... getting to know My you. honorable mention is Grease. Oh, God, Grease. my wife, honorable, that's... But honorable mention, and the only reason why is because, and I've told this story before to Jason Holly. when I was like six years old, I guess I used to run around and be like, oh, I got a hickey from Kinnicky, and I did not know what that meant when I was six. And so then when I rewatched it as a teenager, I yelled at my mom, I was like, how dare you... Made me sit like you know, but they, um, no. But my my movie that defined my childhood was The Wizard of Oz. That's been the film that I will cry every time that I see it. It is a feel good. It was the first time as a little girl I could see someone on TV that I related to, like Dorothy and I. I got it. Like that was it. And so, mm. and it had its 80th anniversary, and I watched it for the first time with Kevin, and I just was like, all these things still ring true to me. Like I gotta have courage. I have to have a all, all those things and i'm like gonna cry thinking about it because it is it it is so powerful to me in more ways than one well it's really held up i think it's one of those where not every movie i mean again we've we've witnessed some of those in our childhood but some of those movies just stand the test of time and i think that's one of them where golly i mean i remember they always had it on every year when we were kids it was on tv yeah yes, they would show it on that. tv Wouldn't once be, a year and and yeah when it, first, it scared me the first time i saw i was really? little enough oh god i seen at the end i still the the, oh, the monkeys Oz. no oh. well the monkeys scared yeah they <laughs> yeah, still the scared me a little <laughs> but no the when he would go in front of oz and the oh. fire and everything that freaked me out I a just, as a kid i feel like there was a moment in time that i remember when it was like black and white and it turned color and it was like Oh, yeah. Whoa, like there was a lot of wonder whoa, to that movie as a it, kid. It is just whew. when I I like I cried when we went to DC and I saw her red ruby slippers. Like oh. that was like oh. that's cool. I don't see it. I bet I haven't seen it for twenty years. It's eighty years old. Go I bet on. I haven't watched yeah. it for twenty years at least. Probably since I was a teenager. I don't think. <laughs> and Holly, this is really tough. I, I know. Mean, I love so many different movies, and I. <laughs> I think the hard thing was like pinpointing what was the one that sort of defined one of those, you know, yeah. age groups. Um, and I have to say when I was probably in elementary school and um, Canadian PBS put out the Anne of Green Gables series. So, I mean, it's not really movie necessarily, but it was kind of the made for TV movie series sort of thing. Um I loved Anne of Green Gables. I was a little girl who loved books and she had red hair. And so I was like different from a lot of kids in my class. And I like to use big words and all that kind of stuff. So like, even though that was a period piece historically, like it just sort of like, oh, I get her and she would get me kind of thing. So like, it was just this really cool sort of identification and um, the way they pieced it together, because I've read all the books, um, they did a really beautiful job, just the cinematography and the scripting and even who they picked as far as the actors and actresses. So like I that's one that I own as well that I could go back and I can't do this with a lot of movies. I can't go back. I'm not a rewatch the movie 5000 times person. Oh. I love to quote them and I have fun watching it. If it happens to be on TV and I really liked it, I'll watch it. I'll sit there, but I don't intentionally replay something over and over again. But this is one between revisiting revisiting that and then reading the books that I could go back back and forth each time. So it's just kind of I don't know. It's sort of poetry. What's it called? Anne of Green, Anne Gables. Of Green Gables. It's a classic. In so fact, Jason bless his heart gave me an amazing gift he gave me like a second edition original version of anna green gables ellen eBay. montgomery yes and so he gave that to me um it was for a birthday gift yeah. wasn't it yeah I was gonna say. I was say it was like uh, that's cool out of nowhere everybody had that book i mean I remember everyone reading the book yeah. um as much as anything from yeah. when i was a kid um, but yeah, I do remember that being on TV. Gee, I feel like mine wasn't deep enough now. I feel yes. like I just, you guys have all these very deep inspirational <laughs> stories. I'm like, there were a lot of good future, fart, man. there were good fart jokes in Tommy Boy. I like that one. I've never heard of this. I've never heard of this. Oh, this honey. to me looks like Little House on the Prairie. Oh, no, yeah. it's actually not like Little House on the Prairie because oh. I'm not a huge Little House on the right. Prairie fan. Apparently, it's so much, it's so much deeper. Did you know they have that? a Netflix show coming out about it? I do. And I'm about it. So. Oh. Oh well, then she, she's old school. Well, true, what's really cool? true. Anna Green Gables fans are not necessarily a fan of that. 
So sorry. And yeah. what's adorable is our daughter is a lot like Holly, where she's a total bookworm. She uses big words, so I know that'll be a cool thing. You <laughs> we guys get each other. Yeah, you get each other. That'll be a great thing. You can you can like. I know. I can't wait. Daughter. I already uh, have the I'm series have to, sitting there on the I shelf. That's a good thing. Is it on Amazon or anything? So oh, yeah. I can, is it okay? Um, I have to pull that up for my daughter. She probably yeah, oh and my it. wife would probably appreciate. I that. hope she's my so dad good. someday goes. Teacher knows a lot of big words. And when Gilbert. <laughs> When Gilbert Blythe died from a, like an aneurysm like four or five years ago, all in fact, I saw my Facebook page like blow up as far as because I, you know, I have friends who are fans of the same thing. In fact, I have a friend, Anne with an E, and we were just like, oh, that was like, you know, our child crush. Like, oh, you know, that was Gilbert. And yeah. So, yep. My question to you, Jack, and then we'll wrap up, is the other thing that's been an anomaly for me is I'm not a big baseball fan, but I love baseball movies. Like, Field of Dreams is probably my second runner-up. Like, that one, like, in terms of my bond with my dad, like, that was one him and I watched together as a kid, and, like, that that was... Huge. No, there were uh, Field of Dreams is there for me. Hoosiers would be the probably yes. the other one that I would have said. Na- the and natural Hoosiers and Field of Dreams. Field of me. Dreams and Hoosiers were probably my big sports ones. In fact, if I had said another movie, it probably would have been Hoosiers. You're yeah. a big Rudy fan list. though, too. I'm and Rudy, Rudy and Rudy, the underdog, I just, Rocky. Yeah. I mean, I'm just I'm like yeah. I'm, I'm into the you underdog. Cannot get thing. enough of that. Yeah, <laughs> Rudy's a, Rudy's good too. Oh, Out of all, all those, those movies you just said, I've only seen Rudy. I've never seen Hoosiers. I've never oh. seen. Do you know what's funny? I just had an alert that came up. On, I set it for the beginning of baseball season. I set it when I was thinking about it, like last fall. It said, "Watch Field of Dreams with my son," and I so I set a reminder Excellent. to do that. There you so go. I, I need to do Is that. Is that the one with Charlie Sheen? No, no, Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner. Is it it's Charlie Sheen in a baseball that's movie? Major league. That's, that's Major League. That's Major League. That's a good too. That's good too. Really that good. Was, that's uh, a total. And then, um, oh, I very have, different. Though. I have seen though. There's no crying in baseball. I've League seen the field. League 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 yeah. There was a good run, man. The '90s had some good movies. It really did. Wow. It really did. <laughs> it, I mean, you go to those comedy ones or the sports ones, and it was just, they were, there was a lot Some of, of these childhood ones, and I'm sure you found this to be true too, but like, we'll want it like Goonies. We wanted to show yes. that to oh. our kids, yeah. and we put it on, we're like, oh, <laughs> I know, isn't it hilarious? Turn it off. <laughs> There's so many things in those. It's like, maybe just so a little bit. They kids. would never get away with that now and call it PG. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> Same crazy. exact experience. Yes. Because wow. we started and we're like, yeah. I mean, oh, we're not yeah, we're super conservative, off. but like, yeah, yeah, this, like, Guardians of the Galaxy is less sophisticated and right. adult-like than right. that one. Uh, so. I've never seen The Goonies either. All right, we need oh, to make you a, an 80s and 90s no, must-see kidding. movie list. But I've seen a lot of, I don't know, I mean, I if like you, to If figure. you talk to Caitlin, that's the interesting thing. The gal that works for us that does our video, she's 17, and like, she loves 80s pop culture. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a ride. So again, it just depends upon generations. It's like... You know, some of us, I, we grew up, my, my dad playing 60s music. You know, some of them learned 80s. I mean, it's just, mm-hmm. uh, again, it's just, it depends upon kind of, you know, where you grew up. And But I agree, the 80s, 90s, they had a heck of a run, man. Yeah. It wasn't quite everything was a sequel or a comic book movie then. Correct. Uh, I'm probably it was making original, some people mad by saying that. But. Original <laughs> stories. I mean, now they're redoing or doing the live versions or of like the Disney. Or the 15th the reboot of the same thing, uh, you know? Yeah, right. It seems like there's a lot mm-hmm. of that. Well, I will be the one... In line for the new Top Gun. <laughs> That's right. They're redoing Top Gun. Yes. Aren't they? They're not redoing it. They're, they're adding rebooting on. It. Yeah, they're yeah. Is it technically a sequel? It's the yes, yeah. it is yeah. technically a sequel. Uh, what have you been wondering what's going on for the last thirty years in their lives? <laughs> No, can Scient- find out. Scientology, that's what's going on. <laughs> anyway, well, right. Jumping anyway. on couches. Yeah. Tom Cruise oh, playing man. sand volleyball. <laughs> oh, 40 my. years later. No, now he's going to be like the short man. Is like, Val Kilmer <laughs> in it? Is Val Kilmer uh, I think, in the new I one? Think so. I think so. I think so. Iceman is no very... Like all of us, Iceman is aged. I don't know he, if I can do the chomp of his teeth not, and have it catch He's not aged. dangerous. <laughs> all right. Well... <laughs> And on that note, before <laughs> we leave, everyone can find um, our social media platforms, Generate Marketing, that's G-E-N-R, with the number eight marketing. Our Instagram is Generate Lincoln. Jack, how can they find you on social media? Uh, let's see. If you, uh, I'm uh, My personal Twitter account is at Jack Mitchell LNK. I got about 70 Twitter accounts, uh, but yeah. the main <laughs> ones, uh, it, it, my KLIN one, uh, Jack M underscore KLIN radio. Uh, that's where I, I do all my work stuff at LNK today uh, there as well. And then Facebook is probably the other place to find me. Just search Jack Mitchell on Facebook. That's Woo. where I am. 
I have um, an Instagram account, but I don't post very much. What about your podcast? Dude, oh, yeah. Me. Oh, yeah, the podcast as well. It's the Jack Mitchell Podcast. Uh, search it. We're on iTunes. We're on Google Play. We're on Spotify. Um, all of those places. Libsyn is, is where it originates. But wherever you get podcasts, you should be able to get it. And I made an easily searchable, won't get confused term with the Jack Mitchell Podcast. Very uncreative name. So <laughs> should be able to find it. So would love Marketing for you to subscribe. Wins. I was going to say, Google <laughs> likes that, man. Simple. What, I know. I the actually, name I, of what you do in the name of it. I had some creative things, but I was like, listen, this is probably going to be the easiest way mm-hmm. to do it. So Well, thank you so much, Jack. Hey, yeah. thank really you, guys. I enjoyed it. it. This was fun. Oh, I mean, it's, it's so we, again, thank you for coming on. Our final thought. Marking plug here. Everyone leave reviews for your favorite businesses. I beg of you. Just leave reviews on Facebook, Google. Mm. Super it's easy. one of the best ways you can show them some love. Yeah. We yes. can we can talk about that on a later podcast. But also, everyone, happy National Unicorn Day. <laughs> Ooh. Sparkle. Whoa. Everything. We need to tell Lydia that. She's I loving know. unicorns, man. She'll need to know the follow-up Mermaid Day, of course. Of course. Uh, Mermaid yeah. Day was actually two weeks ago. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. If you Sorry, were on Lydia. Twitter or Instagram, if you, you need, would have saw that. If you need ideas to post, Jack, you just need to talk exactly. to Exactly. I'll All right, make thanks. sure to remind me next year on National Mermaid Day before it happens, <laughs> so I'm ready. I, I, the only reason why I knew that is because they, they showed the Little Mermaid on TV, oh. and then... Got it. Yeah. There it is. All right. Duly noted. All right. All thanks, right. everybody. Thank you.